If you're planning your next trip to Madeira and want to know about the go-to places, then look no further. We just came home from our 7-day itinerary around the so-called European Hawaii and I spent a lot of time researching the most popular spots to visit and where to find the hidden gems of the island. So let me show you everything I wish I had known before coming to Madeira. And make sure to stick until the end so you don't miss out on some bonus tips. First off, a road trip is the best way to explore the beauty of Madeira, since you can drive around the island going from one place to another in your own pace, spending less time in the car and more time adventuring through the stunning nature. Nonetheless, all the places I mention in this video can be reached from any point on the island within a one to three hour drive. But you'd still need to rent a car. And when looking for a rental, make sure to take some extra horsepower, since there are a lot of steep ascents everywhere. And the rentals are not even that expensive. We got this Fiat 500X with unlimited kilometers for about 35 euros per day for 8 days. I'd recommend spending your first day and a half in Funchal. It's the largest town of Madeira and located at a hillside on the south coast. In Funchal, the whole old town is worth exploring. There are a lot of tiny streets and alleys with little restaurants and shops selling homemade goods. One of the tourist hotspots is the Mercado dos Lavradores. This colorful market is the perfect place to pick up fresh produce, flowers and handicrafts. And don't miss the fish market, where you can see locals and other tourists spitting on fresh seafood. Yes, it definitely smells like fish in here. If you're into wine, you gotta try the Madeira, a fortified wine only made on this island. The Madeira wine is one of the most famous and respected fortified wines in the world, making it a favorite among wine enthusiasts and collectors. It comes in a range of styles, from dry to sweet, and is typically served as an aperitif or dessert wine. The next thing I want to show you takes us out of the center of Funchal to the suburb of Monte, a charming village located high in the hills above the city. The famous Funchal cable car. The journey takes around 10 to 15 minutes each way and offers spectacular views of Funchal, the ocean and the surrounding mountains, making it a great way to get a taste of the natural beauty of Madeira and a must-do activity for anyone visiting Funchal. Once up in Monte, there are a number of things to see and do. I'd recommend you to visit the Monte Palace Tropical Garden, which features exotic plants, ponds and waterfalls. This Japanese garden honestly was my favorite place in Funchal, and trust me, you'll love it there too. Those typical tiny bridges and the red architecture look absolutely stunning and make up for some great photo spots. Now, for the more adventurous of you, there are hiking trails that lead you out of Monte into the surrounding mountains, offering even more stunning views of the island and its coast. So go back down to the old town and continue our road trip around the island. And what better way to do this than with the classic toboggan sledge. The Monte toboggan sledge is a traditional form of transportation that has been popular in the Monte district of Funchal for over a century. The ride takes approximately 10 minutes and covers a distance of two kilometers. Along the way you can enjoy spectacular views of the city and hillside. The sledges are made of wicker and mounted on wooden runners. They are steered by two drivers known as Cajairos. Cajairos. Who wear traditional white uniforms with straw hats and boots. The Cajairos navigate the sledges down the narrow streets at speeds of up to 38 kilometers per hour. But the majority of the ride is much lower than that. The tradition of the Monte sledge dates back to the 19th century when wicker baskets were first used to transport goods down the steep hills of Monte. Over time the baskets were modified to accommodate passengers and the Monte sledge as we know it today was born. And it doesn't come cheap with about 30 euros for two persons and you stop more or less halfway down to Funchal. Now walking back down takes quite a long time but you can also take a taxi which costs another 10 euros so keep that in mind when coming up. Overall, the Monte Sledge is a fun and unique experience. It's definitely worth trying if you're looking for a one-of-a-kind adventure on your trip through Madeira. But enough from Funchal, let me show you all the other beautiful places for your perfect road trip. Because there are dozens of those all around the island. And many of them not even far outside Funchal, like the Cabo Girao Skywalk or the Anjos Waterfall.
Now, if you're into adventures, I got another go-to place for you. Except this time it's not only one place, but an 11 km long hiking trail called Levadas da Vinci Cinco Fontes. I hope I spelled that right. The trail guides you along so-called Levadas. Those Levadas are long, thin aqueducts and form an intricate network that is crisscrossing the island for more than 1300 km. This way, you can feel the Madeiran nature and its countless waterfalls firsthand. Now, if you expect this to be an easy hike, you're horribly wrong. It goes up and down and there's basically no straightforward way to go anywhere here. The two main attractions of this hike are the Risco waterfall with two huge cascades and the 25 Fondes with many smaller ones. I mean, look at this waterfall. It goes probably like 80 meters high or something like that. Okay. And that's only part one. It goes down another 80 meters. Damn, I should have brought my waterproof shoes. If you already know that you're hiking a lot, then make sure to bring some waterproof shoes with you. And to give you a few other famous hiking trails, I can recommend you Pico to Arriero to Pico Rivo, which we'll come back to later, Levada Nova, Levada do Calderao Verde, and Ribeiro Frio, which leads to the beautiful viewpoint of Balcos. Now, let's get back to the coast. It's a new day and time for yet another cable car. But instead of up the hills of Funchal, we're going down the cliffs of Ajadas da Cruz. The two-way ticket is 5 euros per person, but definitely worth it. After arriving at the bottom of the cliffs, you can stroll through the fields or sit down at the beach. Now, it's pretty windy today, but this is an incredible spot. The high cliffs around you make you feel completely isolated from the island, which makes this a nice place to just take a break, relax and just enjoy the views of the Atlantic Ocean and breathe in the fresh air that comes from it. Sadly, I couldn't fly the drone down here due to all the heavy wind, but we now have to continue our trip and get back up. So let's go. So we just came across this beautiful place right here and we just had to stop. The trees are so large, forming like a giant alley and this looks pretty cool to me. Now if you want to find all those amazing spots that you can't find in any travel guide then I cannot recommend you to use the app Mapify enough. This is not an ad, I'm not affiliated with them in any way but it's just my personal experience from using them since basically like the last year. Now Mapify is sort of like Instagram but you can geotag the exact location you took your photos at. That means that when you're on a trip and looking for some great photo spots or other locations to go, then just use Mapify, scroll through the in-app map and choose from tons of different locations approved by fellow travelers. Now, let's take some pictures and get back into the car. The next place on our list is a small but popular town on the northwest coast of Madeira called Porto Muniz and this is where we are going to spend the fourth night of our trip. Now let me show you what Porto Muniz is famous for. And that are the natural swimming pools, formed by volcanic rocks and filled with crystal clear seawater. When the waves aren't too strong you can take a dive and relax from your trip. Also Porto Muniz is a great place to go whale and dolphin watching. So if you're into watching whales, dolphins and orcas, there are many tours offering excursions for that. But besides that, there isn't much else to do here. We've made it to one of the most famous locations on the island. And I'm sure you've already seen some photos or videos of it before, the Fenal Forest. It's a 30 minute drive from Porto Muniz or one hour if you're coming from Funchal and it looks like the conditions are just about right if not a bit too foggy. But let's explore the forest. As you can see the Fainal Forest is one of the most magical places on earth. 
the odd shaped trees and the steep fog and mist that cover the forest almost every day create such a mystical and ethereal atmosphere contributing to the forest's reputation as a place of enchantment and mystery. Honestly, it feels like being part of a fairy tale. The mist and fog are created by the moisture in the air that is carried by the prevailing winds from the ocean. As the moist air encounters the higher altitude of the mountains, it cools and condenses, forming a thick mist that often shrouds the forest. Another scenic village on our trip is Seychelles. It's a cool place to stop by, lay on the beach and see even more volcanic rocks. But what I enjoyed even more was driving along the coast, from Porto Muniz to Seychelles all the way to Sao Vicente. There were so many small bridges and waterfalls coming out of the cliffs, flowing right into the ocean. It looked amazing. We just arrived at our next destination, Sao Vicente. The town is surrounded by large mountains on the eastern and western side. For this reason, it ranges a few kilometers into the island, filling out the valley in between those mountains. And the most famous attraction of Sao Vicente is a small chapel on a hill called Chapelina de Nossa Senora de Fatima. <laughs> After staying in Sao Vicente for night five, our plan for the next day was to follow the north coast to Sao Jorge and Santana. Okay, quick stop in Sao Jorge. And the cool thing here are the abandoned ruins by the beach. And if you follow the beach north, you'll find a small path leading to Ponta de Sao Jorge. But the way there is pretty challenging. Let me show you what I mean by that. So that's the path to Ponta de Sao Jorge. Uh, let's see how it goes. this out when you're coming here. Yeah, we're going back. Now, back over this bridge. Yeah, that's why I don't recommend you to go here. <laughs> also, there are countless different viewpoints all around the island and it's definitely worth checking out as many as you can because everyone is different than the last and each one gives you a really great view over the coastline of Madeira. So I list a few of them here that you have to check out. This one is called Miradouro do Guindaste and you can find it at the east coast near Santana. Santana is known for its traditional Madeiran houses. They're small brick buildings with white painted walls and roofs made of straw, known as Colmo. One of the most distinctive features of these houses is the triangular shape of the thatched roof. Also, the beaches around Santana and Porto da Cruz are an excellent spot to go surfing. And if you're just starting out, there are plenty of surf schools in the area as well. Good morning, it's now 6.30 am and we are on our way to Sa Ponta de Sao Lorenzo, which is the easternmost part of the island, sort of like a peninsula. And let's see if we can watch the sunrise from there. I have high hopes on how it will look. So let's hope that everything is worth it. We've made it to Ponta de Sao Lorenzo and sunrise is in about 15 minutes. So we still got a bit of time left, but there's a little walk we have to do, get up the mountains here to get a good view on where I hope will be a beautiful sunrise. Whew. I think we made it to the perfect spot. Now we just gotta wait for the sun to come up, but let's enjoy the view in this time. That wasn't really successful, but I definitely recommend this place. You have such nice views, no matter where you go. 
here or even somewhere further down on the hills. It doesn't really matter where you go, but everywhere is just pretty epic. Now, if you got more luck with the sunrise than us, then congratulations. But you need to come here. It's, it's definitely great. And you can even see those airplanes arriving, flowing over us. Now, let's get back to the hotel, get some breakfast, and then I'll tell you what I love about the eastern part of the island. And what I love about the eastern part of the island is that you have such a variety of activities to do here. As I just said, you can go surfing at one of the few sand beaches, but you can also go hiking in the mountains from Pico do Arriero to Pico Rivo, what we will do later today. Or you can go hiking in the deep jungle-like forests that lead up to the mountains or just visit Ponta de Sao Lorenzo, what we did this morning. The terrain there is very different to the other hikes as you find the more desert-like landscape instead of green lush forests and cascading waterfalls that you have on all the other hikes around the island. The last spot I want to show you, in my opinion, the best spot at all on Madeira is Pico do Arriero and Pico Rivo, which are two of the highest mountains here on the island and the views you get are just unbelievable and incredible. You're so high up over the clouds that it's almost always sunshine and the clouds in the mountains look fantastic. You can even drive all the way up to the mountain station, so you don't have to hike up and can then start right at the peak. There, you get incredible views from the beginning of the hike onwards. If you want, you can follow the trail until you arrive at Pico Rivo. The hiking trail from Pico do Arriero to Pico Rivo is in total 9 kilometers long and covered in stairs. And I really mean endless stairways. So I hope you're in good condition since some parts are super difficult. In case you want to finish the whole two-way hike, be prepared for it to take around 8 hours. We hiked only half of the trail before turning back to make it back in time for sunset and it took us 4 hours. Also, if you appreciate me going up, down and up again just for this shot, drop a like please. Thank you. But you don't have to go far from Pico do Arriero to have the best views. One of Madeira's most remarkable places is just at the beginning of the trail, the Stairway to Heaven. A tight stairway that guides you over the peak of the mountain with phenomenal views. And you can visit this incredible viewpoint shortly after. We finally made it back to Pico do Arriero and now it's just time for us to wait for sunset and let's hope we're not as unlucky as this morning waiting for sunrise and get better views this time. But I would say it looks pretty good so far. it was way more successful than earlier today but now that the sun's down and it's getting dark there's so much wind up here and it's really freezing so we better hurry to get back in the car and heat up a little bit Have you visited Madeira before? And if so, what was your favorite place? Let us know down in the comments. And go watch the cinematic travel film I made about our trip next.